this is Ezekiel Dasho, and I'm going to draw this woman, and I'm going to use a little bit different of a style, and we can talk about it as we go. Um, using a hard charcoal sketch pencil, uh, it's kind of easily, uh, readily available, probably at any any art supply store. So let's uh, let's dig in here. Um, I'm going to start this sketch with more of a more of a what's the word I'm looking for geometric sort of construction than I usually do, and so. I'll just go I'm starting with the outline here and I'm going to break everything into, let's go into her eyebrow right here. I'm going to break everything into uh, geometric sort of lines, not really deal in smooth curves yet and just block everything in and quickly in these. Um, so like on this curve on her cheek, I'm making it into a bunch of straight lines and stuff. And uh, the angularity and just the, uh, the straightness make it easier to gauge uh, as you build. And uh, that's as much as I'm going to go in with the features for now. I'll sort of block in some of this nose here. And keeping it mostly in the straight line round still. And we'll, you know, sort of little areas like that where it's pretty easy to see. I'll just stick with the curve and kind of like the expression on her lips she looks like she's half smiling and half you know calling me out on my bullshit Lots going on here with the neck, which we can get into in a little bit. And then for some of these, I'm going to change up my grip for some of these lines, like this uh, bit of her bag or whatever she has, a strap of her purse or whatever. And let's get this eye placed and, you know, obviously the placement of these key features is of paramount importance as we're doing portraiture. into my blockier, more geometric way to just block it in. I 
it kind of trails off a little bit there. So let's look at what we've got. Places that I could stand to have a little correction. This could be hair. This could be eyebrows. Coming up here, more hair. And then the edge of her. Just changed up like grip, and now I'm going to get this smoother line. Um, the edge of her, I don't know what you call this thing, bandana, babushka. And the details here are going to be a little less exacting, but we get the we'll get the ear placed here and. Some of these areas I'm almost just testing in where the shading will go and so I'm not pushing very hard at all. And that's just helping me establish a kind of a line that I can live with for now because I know that they'll change a little bit as we go here. And her earlobe is longer than you know, the earlobe of somebody who's younger or maybe has never worn earrings. And this comes down here and a little neck crease. And then we'll see, we'll see some of the real benefit of this overhand grip as we go into the longer smooth lines like this and so then she's got this um, border to her shirt and picture here for a second and now we're just kind of doing a line drawing of the of the uh, the bushka and we've got this area blacked out for hair and then on this side let's quick just bring in some more of her shirt and if you want, you know, start putting in little details like here. We know this just for reference sake, this rose pattern will go there. And so let's uh, start shading her in a little bit. And um, let's, you know, look at where the light is coming from. And we see that it's coming from, you know, this general direction here. And so we can go about shading in everything that's on this plane here is away from the away from the light source and it's gonna be in shadow. Definitely pretty pronounced shadow. And the 
then we can start. Just, I'm going to uh, just darken these up a little bit so that I don't lose the lose the shape and character of the nostrils as I'm shading around them. Um, but yeah, so right now I'm just quickly getting in some of these other areas and let's talk about this crease here by her cheek. Um, basically got this shape here, just shadow that in. And upper lip, darker than lower lip. And lower lip getting some highlights. In this area here. And there's this darker shadow here. So I get the eyebrows And it's quite a bit lighter over here. Um, I do want to give it some trying to think of meaningful things that I could say about my process here. Um, if you've been with me before, you may notice some of the differences. And if this is your first time uh, watching me draw, drawing along with me, um, welcome. And Hopefully everything you need, all the information you need is just contained in the, the video. I don't want to get too wordy about it. Um, but let's, uh, let's see if I can bring this even closer to the eye to bring it in line with the woman in the picture.
Makes it's almost black here, the other white of her eye is so dark. Sometimes with a charcoal like this, I almost feel like I'm painting a little bit more than I feel like I'm drawing, which feels nice. And so it's a nice, uh, nice way to change it up. If you've been like me, I've been using a graphite so much lately that I just needed something to change it up a little bit. And Definitely the values are a little more dramatic and it's it's a little bit different of a animal than graphite, that's for sure. But uh, it's a lot of fun and so let's see. Here we get into the lighter parts of her face too. I might bust out a kneading eraser later and add some highlights to something I don't do very often on a graphite drawing. I just feel like I have so much more control over what I'm doing on a graphite drawing then. That's probably a function of the particular charcoal pencil I'm using too. This is a very wide pencil and it wasn't you know, it wasn't terribly expensive or anything. some of these crinkles and lines in the face a little bit. And uh, if you've been shading along with me, then you can use, you know, the, the side of the pencil that's almost turned into the like a knife blade. It can do these really fine lines to get some of the texture of the shading in there and uh, I don't know if I would re actually recommend this kind of pencil to anybody I don't really use it very often and now that I'm using it I don't I've used it a couple times for a couple other drawings already, and um, I can't really. The one benefit of it, I guess, is that it um, peels away, and you know, has this string that peels away, so that you can just access more of the charcoal without really having to, you know bust out a knife or whatever but I'm not sure that that's really that big of a benefit and the quality of the charcoal is meh, middling I'm still getting a decent drawing out of it but I just I, I not I, I think I wouldn't try to like advertise this or sell this to anyone. Don't go looking for the same brand as me on this one. Just again, just get some that looks good to you. And I guess maybe I'll start whistling a different tune if by the end of this drawing I'm so thrilled with it that you know. I 
I, don't know, it, I shouldn't bag on it too much. I should, I just am so not used to using charcoal that. That uh, it's just that it's something I really have a lot of natural affinity for at the moment. But it, it is coming together pretty nicely, and let's get some of these areas ever so lightly shaded in, and maybe we'll come back and hit them with some highlights later. But for now, I want to leave this boot-shaped chunk in this spot above her lip. I want to leave those white for now. And go along painting the rest of this uh, Um, this, the, you know, this isn't anybody I know. This is just obviously, I'll, I'll put the link in the comments, but this is just a photo from the Wiki Commons. And uh, so I'm not being too terribly worried about the precise details of everything. You know, I'm not trying to show this portrait to the family members of the people who commissioned it or anything like that. Um, and so, you know, I wish I could say that I wanted to make some stylistic choices and that those choices were why I was deviating from what I actually see, but it's more of just a matter of being a little bit hasty and putting it together. Um you know, and not measuring and not really blocking in everything as thoroughly as, as a, one could if one so desired to. So let's move it along here. One of the benefits of this kind of sketching too is that it's pretty quick and uh, definitely good for studies and here kind of just shading in the the shapes as I see them this one is an interesting one it's almost more about shading than drawing because of the the lighting and the forms and stuff Get in closer for some of these more detailed areas too.
and it's kind of nice drawing into charcoal too and it, um, you, you get this sense of like increased value on everything over the the graphite like the blacks are definitely blacker and so it just feels like you've got a little bit more range of motion in that value area um, so let's uh, start finishing it up here So this part of the cheek is just uh, the cheekbone here, quite bright through this area. And then the shadows are quite linear on this area too. eyes can get even darker it's just this interesting process of things get darker and then everything else has to get darker too and the light the stuff that's light you know definitely starts to stand out more too to be too careful with the fine details here just give it some kind of pattern in this case just some directional hint of which way the beads are going in the picture and some hair it's mostly black with a few gray hairs. It might save the those areas for the highlights. And let's see the oh the strap on her. There we go. And give it some shadow tones and then some lighter tones for that going through and refining some of these shadows a little bit.
And let's see if I can just quickly wrap this up here. Oh yeah, just looking at this point, just looking for details and places that could use some extra Kind of just doing this like crisscrossing motion here for some of these textural areas. And uh, like when it gets to the shadows, just kind of like letting everything get drowned out and be a shadow. But when it gets into the light a little bit, uh, letting everything, letting all the details kind of. become more visible. So like this spot on her cheek, like these like little wrinkles and weathering lines and stuff can start to come through. But when it gets to this shadowy part, I'm not worried about it. And I'm worrying about it a little bit back in here because that way the parts that are visible will look Right, and the parts that are in shadow will look like they're in shadow. So, let's maybe start to wrap it up a little bit here.
do some of these details too. And then some more of these detail areas here. And let's do a little bit of a touching it up here. Hi there, sorry about that edit. Um, there were some technical difficulties, so I had to jump away. Um, but pretty close to the end of this drawing anyway. And before we finish up, I just wanted to add some of the finishing elements. Um, wanted to put a little bit of just some kind of value on it dress so that it's not so flat and white. And even through here a little bit too. And I'm just going to continue with the contour of this. some of the sense of some of this hair in here and get some of the shading and some of the babushka in here let's darken up these eyes a little bit one shadow shape almost all the way through here continues all the way over to here and there's a little bit of hair coming from out from under the babushka on that side it's a small thing, but I think it, it sort of an important element of the hair, babushka combo. And let's give this a little slightest bit of value to that. And 
then with some value here to something like that. Um, maybe, maybe a little more here than those two. And I think I'm sort of pulling back and looking at it from far away a little bit. Um, I think it could, she could use a little more. Value in the lips there. And let's, let's get a little more darkness to the certain areas of the eyes. They're just so, so dark that in the photograph that, you know, it's not often that you get to Look at these kind of lines and detail. They're they're very interesting. Um, so yeah, I think that's bringing in us into the home stretch here. Sorry, I said that like five times now. Uh, famous last words, I guess. Maybe I'll bring this line down here to add some additional, or not add really, but just to sort of help communicate the sense that I'm getting from the picture of the patterned. Bushka a little bit and to just have some nice clean straight lines and contrast with all the curves and squiggly lines that we've got in this picture already. So yeah, is it Good enough to show people. You know, I'm coming around a little bit on this pencil. I feel like as I practice with it a little bit, getting farther away from the tip and using this 
I can get these really nice soft lines and I can get these really nice hard lines and smooth, direct, like confident lines. And um, as I as I shade, it starts to work almost like a calligraphy pen where some, you know, if you want thick lines, you can use the one side. And if you want slender lines, you can use the, the other side. So and I definitely do like the level of, you know, the amount of black it can put onto the paper. You know, but I think that is more of, you know, I'm not trying to sell this particular kind of pencil, but it's just more of a thing about charcoal. I'll probably try a different kind of charcoal pencil in my next picture and see if I like it more or less. I'm just in the process of trying out different brands right now and different styles and but I'll explain the materials that I'm using in the next video so anyone who's interested we can look at some of that stuff one thing that I do really like about these just charcoal pencils in general um, is compared to like oil paint or a lot of other media they are quite uh, economical and you know portable and Those are those are aspects of a of an art supply that you know, can't be undervalued sometimes when you on the go or when you want to make something that looks like you know you could if you've got the talent you could take this cheap little piece of charcoal this rock basically and turn it into pure gold, you know? I mean, it's, you're taking a small piece of rock and a cheap piece of paper and turning it from those two relatively, you know, worthless objects, really valueless objects to the world at large. And you can turn that into, um, something that's worth more than its weight in gold. Literally. So it's got that something alluring about that. With oil paints, I mean there are paints that if you if you go and buy the a certain color, you know, the paint itself is worth you know, you can spend so much money on paint. Some pigments are, themselves are so expensive. I am droning on and on. We should just sign it and be done with it. Got this happy little babushka. And I'm going to put a couple more details here. And then I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate sort of the edges that this thing can get. Kind of like that. But thanks for being with me and I'll see you next time.